Hello, this is Maggie. I wanted to talk about the par partial lunar eclipse coming up um, on uh, March 24th. March 24th, 2024. So let me just bring up the chart. It will be in Libra. It will be in Libra and it will be visible. Um, let me just share the screen and look at the chart. Partial lunar eclipse. Yeah, so I like this chart. It's a, look at this beautiful triangle going on. First of all, that's the first thing that struck me, this gorgeous triangle. It's air. As you can see, I'm really into elements. There's a great book by Stephen Arroyo uh, about the elements. Yeah, so, um, but the trine is between Libra. <laughs> I always jump right in without without starting at the beginning. That's typical Aries with Mercury and Aries. Just, you just kind of jump ahead. Jump ahead of yourself. But partial lunar eclipse, March 24th, 2024. <clears throat> it's uh, sun, four degrees Aries. And the moon, one degree Libra, Mercury. <clears throat> Mercury 23 degrees Aries and Chiron is 18 degrees Aries. So you can look at the degrees. So the opposition, of course, is to the moon. And this is the, the you know, the nodes, of course, are north node Aries, south node Libra. So um, there goes the sun. Sorry about the lighting in here. But Maybe we should put a light on. Anyway, uh, yeah, I was going to actually read something from uh, Sabian symbols. The Sabian symbol for this is three degrees. The lighting is terrible in here. Three degrees. Uh, three degrees Libra. So. Yeah, I'm just looking at the trine between Pluto and air, Pluto and Aquarius, fixed, fixed air, cardinal air, moon, Libra, and they're trining. Oh, they're trining the midheaven. <laughs> of course, they're trining the midheaven is in Gem Gemini. Mid Midheaven's in Gemini in this chart. So, um, There's a beautiful, beautiful sextile going on. These green lines are sextiles. I say this all the time, but those are possibilities, opportunities, a lot of times a way out. But this chart looks so beautiful that I there's really not a whole lot of conflict in it. Um, the only pattern, the only, I wouldn't call it power struggle, but the opposition is always, always different from from you, from your sign. And as I said in my last video that I haven't even posted yet, is that you can draw on the gifts that the your polar opposite has to offer you. Doesn't mean you should marry your polar opposite. Uh, you can, it depends on a whole lot, lot of other factors in your chart, but <clears throat> yeah. But the opposition is not always a power struggle. So the, but the green lines are, are sextiles, it's possibilities, opportunities present themselves. Um, and you could use those and what they are, we're just kind of dreaming about them right now, you know, um, how they will manifest and what they are. Um, yeah, we don't know yet. We won't know yet, but the eclipse, the eclipse will reveal that, you know, through all the phases of the moon and it, it will be revealed maybe within like six months or so. Um, but this, these, 
the this is a 60 degree aspect between between Saturn and Venus and Uranus and Jupiter in Taurus. So they work together. They're communicating together very, very well. It's easy, easy flowing, harmonious aspects. So I love it. I really love it. Um, and to Pluto as well. <laughs> to Pluto as well, because Aries and Aquarius are like that. You know, they they just they just really, really click Aries and Aquarius. I always say they're soulmates, but um, but with Pluto, with Pluto there, it can be sort of an intense friend, but it could also be an off the wall friend. But you know, Aquarians like that, um, and it's all about groups. So like joining, I think for. For everyone, you know, just just kind of find your tribe and join it, you know, and, and beware, <laughs> beware of jealousy, you know, try to, because Pluto can, Pluto can bring that up, you know, maybe jealousy over thinking your friend has something that, that you don't have, and they're having all the fun, like they're in some painting group or something, and you're doing your astrology, but you can't tell them about it because they're like, you know, anti-astrology and stuff like that you know stuff like that could come up um yeah it's, it's come up for me before with a, a family member so it's like I kind of have to keep my stuff hidden from her because she's just like super protestant against it but that's my issue <laughs> it's, uh, but yeah anyway Everyone has their their belief systems, and with the fixed with the fixed uh, modalities, they could be super super rigid about it. But this chart has very strong strong mutable mutable flair to it, and that's all this all this water all this water. You know, Pisces is like go with the flow, catch that wave. You know, <laughs> another one will come along, and Taurus is like. Dig in. We got to, you know, we've got to get grounded and get this done now. And Libra is ruled by Venus, and so Venus is it's got to have beauty and har harmony at any cost. And with Aries, they love to spar. They like a good. I won't say they like a good fight, but sometimes they do. They just they just kind of want someone to spar with it and not take it seriously. But um, you know, or they might you know, get in an argument and just get over it. Whereas Libra wants just peace and harmony at any cost. And they'll, you know, just, you know, you want to be aware of codependency in relationships. And if you haven't learned, learn that, um, there's all kinds of, <laughs> all kinds of ways that you could, you could learn to deal with that, you know, um, because it's it's a real thing. It's a real thing, and it's not just Libras that deal with it. It's you know, it's it's just a human condition. A lot of people have that, and until they learn the hard way, which Aries always learns everything the hard way. From my experience, <laughs> only from my experience, um, how to how to individuate within a relationship is hard as hell. I mean, it is really, really hard to do that. Um, yeah, hats off to people that do it or that that you know stay married and all that stuff. But uh, so this 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 eclipse is going to be you know pointing to all those things, pointing to all those things. Certainly pointing to relationships and how to be yourself within a relationship, how to do a relationship, how to how to stay in a relationship, or you don't have to, no, you know, <laughs> there's so many, so many great sextiles for Aries, uh, Aquarius, Aquarius, you know, may be looking for opportunities to, to initiate, to start a new venture, you know, to maybe say you're, you're a, a hacker. <laughs> say you're a radical Aquarian hacker. 
Um, and you, you want it. I'm not encouraging like spies or dark web stuff or anything, but you know, you could use this as an opportunity to start your new venture, whatever, whatever your new venture is. Um, and you could put that out there because, because Aquarius is all about uh, invention, science, um, groups, electronics, and certainly technology, <laughs> technology, AI, all of that. So, you know, if you if you're not necessarily a scientist, but anyone can just put your stuff out there. And sextiles are excellent opportunity for Aquarius and Aries as well to do that during this during this season. Um, and this beautiful trying energy <laughs> between all the air signs, you can also use that. Uh, Gemini, you know, if you have any planets in Gemini, this particular chart has Gemini on the on the mid heaven, which is your career sector. If you have planets up here, um, but Libra, I mean, all the air signs, you know, Libra. Libra, Aquarius, Gemini, they're all about ideas, thinking, um, quick with the ideas and relationships and people, you know, whereas Aries is not, I'm not really much of a people person. I, a lot of people say they're me first, but they just don't really sometimes know. They're kind of loners, actually, you know, they probably got that leftover from Pisces, you know, coming out of the sign Pisces. They just... They haven't de fully developed their social skills. They haven't been around the whole wheel yet. Um, so by the time you get to Libra, you have your social skills totally developed. I mean, you're just, your relatedness and all of that, you know, um, which is, is, is a wonderful skill to have. And so you wanna look for your Venus, move the moon. The moon in this eclipse, uh, Libra, Venus is in Pisces still. It's exalted in Pisces. So that's sensitivity in relationships. And, and since they're, they're both, <clears throat> they're both, well, Taurus is also ruled by Venus, but you can use that Venus to, um, to your benefit in, in you know, not only relationships, just some kind of maybe writing poetry or some kind of art project or something. Let me just get a sip of water. But it looks good. <clears throat> the only glaring, glaring one is the opposition. And like I said, you can, you can draw on your opposition. You know, it depends, of course, what planets you have there. Say if you have Mars and Pluto opposing Mars, Pluto, and Saturn opposing your sun. You know, that that's no easy opposition. But you know, th these <laughs> these are a breeze. You know, and no sweat. Um, because there's no like malefics or heavy duty planets there to contend with. Um, so I wanted to. Uh, Read the Sabian symbol. Well, maybe not. Maybe not read the whole thing, but it's Doctor Doctor Mark Edmund Jones. Sabian symbols in astrology. Uh, he's the astrologer, and Ellie Weasel was the psychic, and she she had visions and drew the visions from his symbols. So the Sabian symbol for three degrees, actually, because it's three degrees and some change, a lot of change, actually. Well, God, not in this particular chart that I drew up, but anyway, it's almost four degrees, so you could read both of them, but I'm not going to. The Sabian symbol for Libra, three degrees, the dawn of a new day, everything changed. <laughs> I love that. This is a symbol of the illimitable potentialities to be found when it comes to any personal participation in everyday affairs 
and of the thoroughness with which each individual remains the recurrent expression of his own self-consistencies. Self there is here the necessity for an ultimate self-dependence. Wow, well, that's Aries. And the consequent need to blaze, <laughs> that's Aries too, to blaze a path of special rec recognition for each particular characteristic of selfhood. Wow. The key is innovation. Wow. That's that's a <laughs> that's an intense eclipse, and that really sums up what's going on. What's going on? These are so right on. I mean, they're just really beautiful. the The four degree one is uh, a group around a campfire. This is a symbol of an initial and uncritical critical consummation of group experience and of the totally unconditional capacity of each individual to associate himself with his kind without extraction or in, inhibition. Implicit here is the fact that any reality broader than a simple self-concern <laughs> must have its origin in common functions where any responsibility becomes the expression of identity rather than of divergence in interest. The key word is amiability. That would probably be the Libra, Libra part, but yeah, I really like the first one. I like the first one. I'm sorry I read them both, but I hope you enjoyed this. I'm gonna just cut it off, cut it off there. I don't see any squares in this chart at all. It's just all it's just all looking great to me. <laughs> it's all looking great. So um stop the share. I had the sun in my eyes the whole time. I hope you enjoyed this. If you do, please like, subscribe, and share. And um, yes, enjoy this eclipse, partial lunar eclipse, and uh, work with it. You can work with it. All right, everyone, please take care.